Okay. So, because this is an example that happens when you're dumb, we have to go back to the olden days. So, this is what happens when you don't use a square reader, okay? If you use a square reader, it, this information comes up, right? But suppose we were selling tickets to a 4-H ball game or whatever the hell the kids are into these days. Um, so you have a, adults' tickets are 11 bucks and kids' tickets are 9 bucks go to a 4-H ball game? I don't know. Inflation's, inflation's a bear, man. <laughs> All right. At the end of the night, you have three hundred ninety-three dollars in the cash box, and you know that you sold thirty-seven tickets. You want to find out how many of these were adult tickets. You guys, cool us. Okay. So, can you write some equations down? Yeah. This is like this is like maybe a reasonable algebra problem. You just probably do, got this. So, like so 11x plus 9x equals 393. Close. So I'm with the 11x, except in good. So you guys are getting to be adults. So we're going to use variables that mean something. So we do 11a plus 9. Okay. Yeah, why is it not A again? Because they're different parts. Because it would be confusing. Yeah, because they're different there's probably different amounts of kids and adults tickets, right? You don't want to force it to be the same because it's probably not the same. And what was this? Eleven times three ninety three. Oh, you're writing an expression for how much money you took in. Cool. So your total profit was three hundred ninety or your total not profit. Do you guys know the difference between profit and gross? Mm -hmm. Our Shio, businessman, what's the difference between profit and gross? Well, the gross is before taxes. No, after taxes, right? Before. Well, you have your net profit and you have your gross. It's before expenses. Yeah, yeah. gross is before expenses, right? Yeah. Like everything that takes a little Yeah, you can what's think about taxes and expense, yeah, right? Yeah, if I, if I like, did the like, strawberry music festival and yeah, I sold, but you know, I made four hundred dollars. But that doesn't take into consideration driving up there and using the gas to get there and renting the car out and then buying the popsicles itself. So, totally. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so this is your equation for your gross, right? What's the equation for the total number of tickets sold? Plus K. You guys all kind of with me on this? Okay, so do you all know how to solve this using like algebra techniques? Maybe ish. Should we do that quick? Show of hands, we should do that? Yep. Okay, all right. So, should be pretty chill. You have two options. You can either get rid of one of the variables. Or you can multiply one of the equations through by a number. Okay. The one maybe you guys are most useful or used to is something like take the second equation, subtract a. You get like k is 37 minus a. Take that information and shove it into the top equation. So this is called substitution. So you get 11a plus 9 times 37 minus a equals 393. And then you can do your like distribute stuff. So you get like 11a plus whatever 9 times 37 is. <laughs> Was it, uh, I was hoping one of you guys would be really on this. Okay. 
Two. Okay. Is whatever it is. <laughs> Minus nine A equals three ninety three. Then we have two A plus thirty three equals three ninety three. So you could subtract, so you get two A is sixty. Okay, so I found out A is thirty from that method. That's cool. So another method you could do is you could Multiply this whole bottom equation through by negative 9 and leave the top equation alone. So you got 11a plus 9k equals 393. And your second equation becomes minus 9a minus 9k equals minus 333. And then you could add these together. The k's will drop, right? So you'll get 2a is 60 again. You guys good with this? So this one, the black over here, is called substitution, which is easier but will be less useful in the context we're in. This is called elimination which is much more like what we're going to do. You guys good with these? Check. So okay. 30 kids is 30 adults the answer. Yeah, so the answer is you sold 30 adults tickets. Why'd you forget that? You guys good with this? Yeah. Or why weren't you keeping track, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so the because we just learned matrices, I want to phrase this in terms of matrices. This does not seem to be especially matrixy right now? Kind of with me? Mm -hmm. So if I phrase this in terms of matrices, I would say that this looks like ooh, this guy right here, that feels like a matrix to me. That feels like a little matrix over there. Um, but these are kind of jacking up my day. <laughs> Right? There shouldn't be plus signs in the matrix. Okay, so let me think about this. If I had a 2 by 2 matrix, and I multiplied by a 2 by 1 matrix, what would the result be? 2 by 1. Nice. The result would be a 2 by 1 matrix. I have a 2 by 1 matrix over here. Okay, so I'm going to hypothesize those guys lived over there. Do you guys see something that got multiplied by the first row and something else that got multiplied by the second row with addition in between? I wish I hadn't erased the matrix multiplication chunk of this. Yeah. Well, yeah. So what if I had an A and a K in there? If you pick that up, twist it sideways, and drop it on, you get A's in the first thing and K's in the second, right? You see that? So what was I dropping it on to? 11, 11 and 9. 11 and 9. Nothing. And ooh, feels like nothing, right? It could be 1. How many A's you got here? 1. 1. How many K's you got there? 1. one. So that's dropping onto the matrix 1, 1. Or sorry, the, the row 1, 1. Okay, it's all good with this? Mm -hmm. So, if my life is a little bit convenient today, this thing will be what's called invertible. Invertible. Okay. Which means there's a way I can calculate this or kind of solve for A and K using the calculator. You guys want to see the calculator method or the hand method? Both. Both? Okay, hand first, then calculator. Okay, so the hand method for this, which is the one that always, always works, you take this thing and you do what's called augmenting. So I'm going to change this from a matrix equation. That's what this guy is. 
into an augmented equation. And the way I do that is pretty chill. I'm going to take the matrix from over here on the left-hand side. Your 11, 9, 1, 1. I'm going to write it down, but I'm skipping the closing bracket. Instead of the closing bracket, I want something to represent this stuff, like multiplied and equal to. So I'm going to put this line that I want you to think says equals. Then on the other side, I'm going to put my 393.37. It should be noted that you can jump from the set of equations you had at the beginning to the augmented matrix pretty quickly. You just read the numbers off. So 11 times the first variable, 9 times the second is your 11, 9, and then equals is a, your vertical line, and then you've got this number 393 on the other side. And then 1 times your first variable plus 1 times your second variable equals 37 would give you 1, 1, line 37. That's cool, that. So if I was thinking equation at this thing, I would be thinking these are like the A's, these are like the K's, this thing's like equals to, and these are like the number on the other side. That's cool, this. Go ahead. When you were doing substitution method, I spaced out. And I'm trying to figure out like, what we can do there, but so I like, took 11a plus 9 and substituted k for 37 minus a. Yep, I took this and I stuffed it in there. Oh, uh, you, okay, so you subtracted. Yeah, so I used this equation to get the substitution okay. and then I made the substitution in the other okay. equation. Okay, so here I have my augmented matrix, right? Now, in order to solve an augmented matrix, all I want you to do is mimic elimination. So I'm going to leave the top row alone, and I'm going to get rid of one of the variables by getting a 0 in the bottom. Sorry, you guys haven't seen matrices before, right? Yep. So, um, uh, just to make life confusing, I'm going to multiply by negative. So, I'm going to take them. Okay, sorry. Let me be, I'm trying to be extremely organized so I don't lose you. So, let me take that and bring it over here where I can play with it a little bit more. Okay, so. I have my matrix that's 11, 9, 393, 1, 1, 37. Okay. So now I've literally replaced the equation I had with this augmented matrix. Okay. First things first, I want to target the entry in the lower left. This is not the only way to do this, it's just the easy way to do this. So, Start by trying to get rid of the guy in the lower left first. So the way you need to get rid of this, you need to add it to this 11 and have it disappear. So what do you add to 11 to get it to go away? Ne uh, negative 1. Negative 11. Negative 11, right? 11 plus negative 11 would be 0. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do nothing to the top row. To the bottom row, I'm going to multiply by negative 11. The whole row. So the rule is you can multiply through by a number, but you have to multiply the whole row through. You don't have to multiply the whole matrix, just the whole row. So your top row is going to be 11, 9, 393. Oh, uh, close. One, one step first, but yeah. So I'm going to multiply through by negative 11. So I got negative 11 
right? That's 1 times negative 11. What's 1 times negative 11? Negative 11. Still negative 11. So you get negative 11, negative 11. And then you get, somebody's going to need to 37 times negative 11 for me. Negative 407. Okay. I don't know. What did you guys get? 37 times 11? Mm -hmm. You sure? How can we check? Because common core a little bit here? Here's how you check. 11 is 10 plus 1, right? So that's 370 plus 37. It's 407 with a negative sign. Is it really what they do with common core now? Yeah. But it's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then my next step is going to be add row one and row two. Put into row two. So I'm going to leave row 1 alone, my 11, 9, 393. And then in my second row, I'm going to do the adding of the first row to the second. So what's negative 11 plus 11? Zero. Zero. What's negative 11 plus 9? Negative, negative 2. And negative 407 plus 393? Negative 14. It's all good with this. Okay. So then I'm going to take this. And I'm going to multiply the second row by negative 1 half and leave R1 alone. R2 times negative a half. Why am I multiplying by negative a half? Because you can multiply negative by one and still get, or zero by one and still get one, or zero, and then two will get four. Oh, actually, I got Close. So if I multiply 0 by negative 1 half, I'm going to get 0 back, right? If I multiply negative 2 by negative 1 half, I get positive 1, I think. And then it's half of negative 14. Yeah, so I'll get 7 there. So I'll have 11, 9, 393, and 0, 1, 7. Okay, which seems like I've gone all around the block for what? You gotta reduce down to two, two rows, one column, right? Damn. Oh, okay, so you're wanting to get rid of this guy? Eventually you have to, right? Okay, let me just demonstrate that I did something useful here. What was this first column standing for? When I had equations. Uh, that was the adults variable, this was the kids variable, and this was the number, right? Mm -hmm. So this bottom line says 0 adults plus 1 kid equals 7. Seven kids? Yeah, that was you sold 7 kids tickets. 30 adults. Check them, what? right? Okay. You guys see that? So this was actually useful, right? I actually found an answer here. If I had eliminated, so instead of targeting this, if I had targeted that, I would have here A equals 30. Can you see that? This is pretty repetitive, right? It's kind of hard to do by hand. Wait, once you get zero, you're like done? done. Once you get For one variable. So once you get, in this case where there's two variables, once you get a zero, you know what the other variable is. Right, so back over here at this step, I could have said, okay, 
minus 2 times k is minus 14. And then I'd divide both sides by negative 2, and I'd get to k is 7. Right? That's exactly what I did. Right? I divided by negative 2 in that second row. So if those were flipped, for instance, then it would be um, negative 2a equals negative 14. Like if the rows were flipped. Yeah, so if the negative 2 is here it's instead the of there. Because adults would be on the yeah. top. Yeah, this column represents the adults, this column represents the kids, and that column represents the number. You guys all on board with this? Yeah, the equations seem way easier, right? With two variables, that's definitely true. With two variables, it's almost always easier to just do the equation. Well, when will matrix be easier? When there's more than two variables. Yeah, even with three, the matrix is easier. Let me show you the calculator way, quick. You guys want to see the calculator way, or do you want? I guess. Go. Really quick. So now that we've gotten um, the adults variable down to zero. Yep. Um, so we know what the kids are. Is, is that why you're multiplying by negative one half to eliminate the? Uh, That's to eliminate the negative two out of this equation. Because negative 2k equals negative 14 doesn't tell me what k is. Okay. I need to divide both sides by negative 2. Okay. If you continued to fiddle in this manner, uh -huh. like if you continued with this, you would get to a matrix that said 1, 0, augmented by 30, 0, 1, augmented by 7. And that would say a is 30 and k is 7. Okay. Let's pull that. So let me show you the fast way to get that. 